Hello, North Country, and welcome to another edition of Fox on the Run, the program where we talk with interesting people in the North Country. I'm Foxy Gagnon. Well, it's late October, early November, and around this time of year, ever since I was a little kid, just around this time of year, I started to look forward to the squeak of sneakers, the shrill whistle of the referee, and the thump of the basketball on the hardwood. Yes, basketball season is coming up. And today we're at Memorial Hall on the campus of Plattsburgh State to talk with men's head basketball coach, Ed Jones. Now, Ed, this is your fifth year at Plattsburgh State, and how do you assess things? Are you happy with Plattsburgh? Oh, absolutely. Glad to be here. But after that introduction, I'm psyched up for hoop season right now, <laughs> man. Right. This is hoop season. Well, hoop season never really ends, but right now we're really getting going, and we're looking forward to it. This is my fifth year here, as you said, and, and uh, we're excited. We've got four new players that are going to help us, I think, immediately. A lot of kids back. This is the first time in 20 near, 29 years of coaching that, that, that I will have seven seniors on a team. Never had that before in my life. So we have some experience, some decent kids back, and four new kids that will help us. So we're excited. Let's go back to uh, when you first arrived in Plattsburgh, uh, probably a big decision to relocate because I believe you'd been uh, 10 years at Utica College. Uh, tell us some of the things that entered into the, the package of you wanting to move to Plattsburgh. Well, first of all, I was very happy at Utica. I was there 10 years as head coach, uh, six years as a Division I assistant, and had been at actually five different colleges down through the years, and, and just felt at that time it was time for a change. I had known Larry Cowan for many, many years. In fact, he was an assistant at Utica College with me when we were Division I, and uh, he became uh, athletic director, and there was an opening, and I looked into it. And, and when, I, when I visited and, and, and really researched it, I just thought that this could be a great uh, Division three basketball situation, which I still bel believe it is, and uh, fell in love with the town, the community, and, and have never uh, second-guessed the decision for coming up here. Had you been to Plattsburgh before through your coaching? Yes, matter of fact, we played in uh, the Cardinal Classic uh, several years previous to that, and that was my first and only time really in Plattsburgh. Okay, and you enjoyed immediate success when you uh, came to Plattsburgh. Yeah, it was a great first year. We had some very good players, and uh, towards the end of the season, we re the chemistry really came around, and we won the ECAC, which was the first time in the school's history, and we won 19 games, which was a school record. So that, 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 was, that was really a big thrill for us. Uh, now, for this year, you say that uh, you're going to have uh, a seasoned team. Tell us some of the, uh, the key players or some of the components of this season's team that we'll look forward to. Well, as I said, we do have seven seniors, and it, it's, it, that just doesn't happen uh, very often. But kids that have they've been in the system for four years, and, and they're really excited about their s senior year. J.J. Garden, is, is, he hasn't played much for us, but he's just a, a tough, hard-nosed kid. And he's our, he's our captain this year, and he's done a great job uh, in the preseason where he gets the kids out, we run, we lift weights, and play basketball. I'm not allowed to be with him during that time, but he's just done a super uh, jo job as captain. And... Uh, Rashad Tucker, who's been with us four years, very quick. Um, he's back with us. Darren Hubbard inside. Uh, so we, we have some kids, I think, who are, are ready to go. It's, it's going to be fun. Do you have height? Do you have speed? Uh, will you be a running team? Yeah, I think this is probably um, maybe one of the quicker teams that I've had. Uh, we're not real big by uh, NCAA Division III standards, uh, but I think we're going to get out and, and defend people and, and play a little bit more of a full court game, a little bit more open court game. So, yes, we are looking to run a little bit more. Uh, that will be determined on how well you rebound, of course, but uh, we look to, to, to pressure 94 feet. We're going to do a lot of pressing, a lot of trapping, and I think it's going to be a, a, a fun team to play for and a fun team to watch. We're talking on October 30th. When does your season officially begin for official practices and so uh, forth? November 16th is when, when we open up the Cardinal Classic. We play Castleton, and uh, the championship game will be on the Saturday the 17th. But we, we, we started official practice October 15th, so we've been going a couple of weeks now. We had a scrimmage against another school on, uh, on Saturday, and that was a good look for us. Uh, possibly have an exhibition game. We'll have another scrimmage. So we have a couple more weeks to get ready, and uh, we're getting better. We have a little ways to go yet, but we're not quite ready to open season right now. Uh, 
let's uh, talk about uh, the practices. What's the usual practice? How long uh, does a practice last? How often do you get the gymnasium? Because I'm sure there are other uh, college sports teams that want to use the facility as well. Oh, well, there are, but we, we work it out. We, uh, we practice uh, normally two and a half hours. Uh, three days a week we go in the afternoon, uh, two days a week we go in the evening from 6 to 8.30. Saturday is usually a morning or an afternoon and we always take, we try to take Sunday off. The NCAA rules, uh, we can only practice six days a week, but uh, being a coach we like to go seven or maybe even eight days a week if we could, sure. but uh, we have to take that one day off. So it's, um, you know, it, it, it's pretty grueling for the kids in, in some senses because we do go six days, two and a half hours a day, and we do have them lift weights during the season. We'll go a couple of, a couple of uh, days a week with, with that. Um, but it, it works out with the other sports. They, uh, we have volleyball still going, uh, women's basketball, and us are all jockeying for the gym. But it, it all seems to work out pretty good. As you look at the SUNYAC schedule, uh, who are a couple of schools that you, you look at that will be tough competition and uh, probably towards the top? Well, when I look at them, I see 10 other schools in the SUNY, and they're all tough, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but Cortland, the last couple of years, uh, has been right up there, and along with Brockport. Uh, traditionally, Buff State has been a very good team. The last couple of years have been off a little bit. But uh, every game, every game is competitive. Uh, when we look at the schedule, we can't put a W there before we play them, because every, every, I think anybody in this conference on a given night can beat anybody else. Talk to us about your staff this year. Okay, uh, I have a new assistant, Stu Robinson. Stu comes from Indiana. Um, Stu's 38 years old and just wanted to get into college coaching real bad, and this was his first opportunity. Uh, he played for Bobby Knight in the early uh, 1980s. In fact, he was sitting right next to Bobby Knight when he threw that famous chair. You're kidding you know, me. He was right next to him. and I, uh, This is a good story. This is a true story. I said, Stu, where, where were you? He said, sitting right next to him. I said, geez, were you afraid when he threw the chair? He says, no, I was happy because I thought he was going to throw me across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, that's true. He said, it is true. He said, the way, the, the way it looked when he turned around, he said, oh, man. That sounds like a good fox on the interview sometime oh, yeah, during yeah. the season. Uh, fox on the run will oh, uh, yeah, corner he, Coach Robinson. Well, uh, Coach Robinson g give you some real good Bobby Knight stories, and I'm sure you'll have fun talking to him about it. So certainly, uh, even though he's, he hasn't been in coaching, an experienced basketball man alongside you. Oh, yeah. He's, he's worked camps, and he's done some things with basketball. So it's not like somebody who's never coached or anything. And he's just full of energy and, and, and very optimistic and just uh, loves it. Loves it. Brought his family out here. He had to take a pay cut to do it. And his family just came a couple of weeks ago, actually. And he, he's just real excited about it, being in college basketball, and loves it here at Plattsburgh so far. How did uh, he end up in Plattsburgh? Um, by that I mean the previous assistant coach uh, left for another job, and uh, there he he found the application or the uh, ad someplace. Yeah, well, we um, you know the ad went out nationally. It goes on the NCAA wire and everything, and he applied. He was applying for a lot of jobs and several interviews, and this is he, he promised himself and his family he was going to grab the first one. He had the opportunity and. And, um, you know, I talked to him on the phone several times and said, are you really interested in this because it's not a high-paying job? And he says, absolutely. We flew him out. I fell in love with him, and, and it, it, it was a good match, a really and good match. You, you hadn't met him before through no. your basketball travels, no. but you knew of him. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. We also have Rob Roy back. Uh, Rob's been with the program. Uh, this is my fifth year. It's been all, all five years, and I, I believe he was let with Larry Cowan two years previous to that. Uh, he drives in every day from Saranac Lake. Uh, uh, he's up what you consider part-time. He, he doesn't get a lot of money. He probably uh, loses money from the yeah. <laughs> just from the gasoline that he uses, but he's a real dedicated guy, and we're glad to have him around also. He, he's a real popular man oh, as yeah. well. Very much. He's a real, uh, real North Country sports guy. I mean, you... If you want to sit down and talk to somebody who remembers things 25 years ago, who hit the winning basket, he's a guy to talk to. Now, we did mention that you um, arrived in Plattsburgh from Utica College, but uh, you weren't born in Utica. No, absolutely. In fact, I was born in Scotland. Uh, came here when I was eight years old and brought up in, in Yonkers uh, and lived in the Bronx. And uh, so I'm, I consider myself a New York guy, really. And, uh, was also Wayne State uh, as a grad assistant uh, out, in, out in Detroit. Spent, wind up spending three years out there. So I have been a little bit of a germ, journeyman through basketball because of basketball. It, it's been good to me, and I've traveled a little bit. I was at Manhattan College as an assistant, Division I, and then hooked up with Larry Costello, who was at Utica College, and they had just gone to Division I. And Larry Costello played and coached in the NBA, so it was a great thrill to have the opportunity to work uh, with him. 
uh, let's go back to New York City and you as a kid. In Scotland, had you picked up a basketball? No, I actually didn't. Um, well, I saw the game several times, but uh, that, you know, it was all football, which, was, which is soccer. And, uh, but when I came here, it was a real city situation where I lived in, in Yonkers, you know, with the apartments. And there wasn't really any much what you consider a real good park. And it was all playgrounds and, and started playing basketball and just fell in love with it. That, that was the game. My junior high school had track and they had, they had basketball and that was it. And uh, I was an athlete, and I did both of those, and they, they just uh, fell in love with basketball. It was almost like a disease I couldn't get away from. I'd live on the, on the outdoor basketball courts, and, and it, it was fun. It was great being a kid in, in the city. I, I loved it. You know, and sometimes I don't know if I'd want to bring my kids up in that situation, but as a kid, I really enjoyed it. And what teams were you cheering for as a kid in uh, New York City? Well, all, usually, uh, well, always, you know, the New York teams, obviously, the Knicks, and my dad would take me to Yankee Stadium, so I got a chance to see Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris and, and those people. And, uh, but I found out that the Boston Celtics had two Joneses on the team back in the 1960s, so I had to, I had to root for them. So I was kind of a Celtic fan, too. Well, I don't know if you're saying that to test my memory, but uh, we'll give our viewers a little second or two to mull around who are those two Jones is on the Boston Celtics, and they're mulling it around. I know guys like Craig Matthews are saying this is a piece of cake. I know this right away. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you my answer. Sam Jones and Casey Jones. That's it. You got it. Two great players. And in fact, uh, Sam was great for the bank shot. So I, I, had, I, had, right. so I had a pretty good bank shot because you did. of Sam. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll blame him for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you went on to college, played some college ball. Yeah, I, actually, I started in junior college, Rockland Community College, played there two years, and then transferred to Brockport. I wanted phys ed, and it was a phys ed school, and I was very fortunate because uh, we had two great years, great years. Uh, went to the Final Four, had the opportunity to play in front of about 10,000 people in, in, in Indiana, Evansville, Indiana. And back then, you only had two divisions. It was university division and college division. They didn't have one, two, and three. So eight teams went from the, around the country, and we were the only non-scholarship school there. So that was, that was a great thrill. Uh, what type of player were you? I'm guessing you're about six feet tall. No, a little well, smaller. A little smaller, about okay. five, ten. Okay, but in the program, they probably put six feet. And um, what type of player were you? Well, uh, well, I could shoot the ball real good. Yeah. And I uh, played point guard some, but I was probably better as an off guard because I, I shot the ball, ball pretty good and uh, very aggressive defensively. But uh, I was a Division three player. Division three. No, I wasn't a scholarship player, but just loved loved the game and, and would do anything to to play. Around when did it hit you that you wanted to coach? Uh, it was probably in late in high school, uh, but certainly when I got to college, I knew right away I wanted to coach college basketball. I just fell in love with that. And were there coaches that uh, you encountered along the way that? probably rubbed off on you? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I played for some good people, so I, I think it took something from everybody. And, you know, Johnny Wooden was coaching back then, and I looked up to him. And, of course, Bobby Knight. I mean, two different, <laughs> two different opposite styles. sides. Yeah, but I, I just loved them both. Bobby Knight I've been following since since he was at Army, and he was just a defensive nut, which which I was as a player, and, and just, um, you know, loved the discipline and those things. And, and of course, times have changed a little bit with that <laughs> the way people look at it. But I just, I, I just think he's a great teacher and a great coach. As people watch you when they uh, pack Memorial Hall this season to watch Cardinal basketball, uh, as they watch you coach, um, what uh, what will they see? What, what what do they see on the sidelines? Are you a fiery coach? Are you a quiet? Coach just always sitting down? Well, I think it's a little bit of a combination. You know, I try to keep my emotions under control. I, I do get very emotional at times, and I'm really into it. I'm very concentrated. And, but I think in basketball, as a player and a coach, you have to have control. You can't just go out there and go crazy and have technicals. I've seen too many games lost because guys get technical fouls. So I try not to get on that side of it. Uh, but, yeah, very, uh, very emotional. We get on the kids. And, and I'm that way in practice, too. You know, we, we, we do a little yelling and screaming, but we love the guys. We hug each other. We say a prayer before the game. We hug each other after games. And, and uh, to me, it's a great lifestyle. I, I don't want to do any, any, anything different. It's a lot of work, uh, but it's, it's fun. It really is fun. As you go out each year and look for basketball players for your, your next year's team, 
Uh, of course, you have to fill in the spots. You need a tall guy. You need a, a quick uh, point guard. You, you'll need certain pieces for the puzzle. But are there some intangibles that you look look for as you sit in the stands and watch a player? Oh, absolutely. You know, first of all, you want to get the best players you can. I mean, obviously, and the best players, uh, everybody everybody's trying to get them. But you want to get good kids too. And uh, one of the reasons we we were down a little bit the last couple of years is because I had to get rid of a, a few kids because they just didn't want to do things the right way. You didn't have the attitude that, that I wanted in a basketball player. And, and so we look for kids that want to work hard and, and, uh, and do, the, do the right thing, you know, stay out of trouble and, and uh, work hard, go to class, study, and play hard on the basketball floor. So I, that's very important to me. And I think, uh, you know, the team we have now, we have good kids that are, that are doing that. I mean, not perfect. You know, boys will be boys, of course, and we're all like that. But uh, I, I, we're working hard to try to get uh, the right type of type of person here well in addition to your coaching responsibilities um, are, are there teaching responsibilities as well here at yes, Plasma I, te I teach a uh, three credit wellness course and I really enjoy that when I first uh, was told I should teach it I, I kind of complained a little bit and then Larry Cowan who who was the AD said gee that's right up your alley because I do I aim into the I am into wellness and health and and um, you know, I run every day, I've always exercised, and I, I try to eat, you know, the good foods, you know, and I talk about it. So every day I, I, I get on the internet and I research and, and I teach the class, and I really enjoy it because I learn something. It's always changing, and, and it's a fun class to teach. I know that you do run. You're not just talking turkey on that one. You do run. Many's the time I've seen you out jogging along. I feel a little bad there. I'm driving my car with my donut in my hand, and there's Coach Jones working hard. And so you keep in as good a shape as you expect of your players. Well, we, you know, I try to. I've, I've always been into it. I've never not exercised. And uh, about 10, 15 years ago, maybe it's getting that long ago now, my, my knees started to go. So I really can't play basketball. I used to, even when I was in my 30s, I would play every day. But uh, unfortunately, those defensive slides and jump shots are cut out with me. But fortunate, I can run straight, and um, I keep going. I keep going. I, you know, I, eventually, I'm, I'm only going to be able to walk. And when I can't walk, then I'm then I, then I'm going to go fishing. But I haven't, I haven't gotten to that part yet. <laughs> okay. In addition to all these things that keep you so busy. Uh, coaching and teaching. I know you're a dedicated family man. I say that because many's the time I've seen you come through the front door of Stafford Middle School where I work and you have children at our school uh, for the past number of years it seems. And uh, So uh, talk to us about your family. Well I've, I've, I've I have to brag I think I have a great family. My wife is a very dedicated uh, dedicated wife uh, she does a lot of volunteer work around town she substitute teaches and and three daughters two of them in the middle school and, and one in the high school and and i we we love the plattsburgh school system we think it's terrific and that was one of the, one of the things of course when you move you look at when you have children you look at that and uh, uh we live in the city uh and couldn't be happier with with the school system here I know you have some other commitments to get to, in fact, some family commitments coming up. So uh, before I let you leave, uh, recap for us uh, when the season begins. Uh, I know our cameras were at your uh, Cardinal Classic last season. We're looking forward to uh, being there for at least one of the games this year. But when is that, and when do you kick off the SUNYAC Conference and all of that? Well, November 16th, a Friday night, Cardinal Classic. We play Castleton State out of Vermont, and, and that's our classic. It's, uh, we'll play s the games are 6 and 8 that Friday, and then 1 and 3 uh, the next day for, for the uh, Constellation and, and Championship. And then right after Thanksgiving, um, we will be playing Potsdam. Uh, they'll be home. That'll be our only only other home game uh, before Christmas, but that, that, that starts off the SUNY. And then we have to, unfortunately, go on the road. Got to go to Buffalo and Fredonia, and, and uh, but we're looking forward to it. You know, the SUNYAC's a great conference, maybe one of the best, maybe the best Division Three conference in the country. It's very competitive, but um, we we think this year we're 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 uh, we're going to make a a real run for it. And I know the viewers are sitting there saying, why didn't Foxy ask this question? I should have asked it a little bit earlier. And I asked Bob Emery the same question about his uh, Cardinal hockey team. Uh, we love to see local athletes make good on the collegiate level. And um, uh, as you said, you're always looking for the best players available. Um, uh, I guess I want to ask, uh, you know, what about local players playing? I know there have been some, but how does that end of the in into the picture as you recruit? 
Well, it enters the picture every year. Uh, ever since I've been here, I've recruited pr one and sometimes two North Country players. Um, unfortunately, we haven't gotten any yet. I'm kind of hoping to get some on the rebound. I know Larry Cowan, uh, he got some uh, players on the rebound. They went away because then a lot of kids like to go away. And uh, they go away and they find out that Plattsburgh is a great place to be. And he got some, some returning. So I'm hoping that happens. And we're recruiting, this year we're recruiting a couple. With NCAA rules, I don't think I'm allowed to mention them uh, right. in an interview on TV. Right, but uh, there's a couple of players right now um, in, in the city that we'd lo would love to have. We'd love to have local players. Uh, Dave Baruti, did he play for you? Yeah, Dave, Dave did play yeah, a couple of years ago. And he's, he was a transfer. He was at Binghamton right. and uh, tra transferred back. Uh, Gavin Mazurik, uh, my first two right. years, he went to Ithaca uh, and then, then came back. So there's, there's been a few around. Uh, and they find out when they go away, hey, grass isn't always greener on the other side. This is a great college town, a great community, great support. In fact, we probably get more support from the community than any other team in the SUNYAC. I'll, ta I'll take Memorial Hall and uh, with the people we get over anyone in the, any, anyone in the conference. I know from being in the gym last season, there are some dedicated fans, familiar faces at every game. Yeah, there, there really is. And, and that's another reason why I, why I wanted to come to Plattsburgh, because, it, because it's a great sports community and the people do support the Cardinals. Coach, thank you so much for talking with us, and good luck on your season. Thanks very much. You've been watching Fox on the Run. Thanks to Eric Gagnon for his work on camera. I'm Foxy Gagnon. We've been talking with Coach Ed Jones of Cardinals Men's Basketball. Get out to a Memorial Hall and uh, follow the team this year, and we'll see you at the gymnasium. We're going to get out and sneak our cameras in and uh, be up at the top of the bleachers. We'll look for you. Uh, this is Foxy Gagnon on behalf of everybody at North Country Cable Network saying, as always, good night, North Country. <laughs>